Lake. Good morning everyone. Welcome back. Another video here on Learning by Doing channel. Hope you guys all had a good week since watching our last video and uh, are looking forward to this one. It should be a pretty good one. We're here in Mazul in the south part of Raja Ampat again and um, about to climb up this mountain and over the other side to a lake that is apparently full of jellyfish that are not stinging you. So we're going to go swimming with them and uh, check it out but I don't know, because of COVID, none of the stuff's been really looked after or used. Like the ladder here is broken and all that sort of stuff. Um, probably no one been here for a long time. So hopefully the jellyfish are still accepting tourists. Hot. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's a bit of a... Bit of a hike up here, these super sharp rocks. The last couple of days now I've had a pinched nerve in my shoulder and it's um, sort of bugging me quite a lot. Taking a little bit of enjoyment out of the adventuring at the moment. I can still move my arm and everything, it's just certain movements really hurt. It's sort of deep in, you know, it's not like put some deep heat on somewhere, it's sort of inside my chest sort of. I think I just slept wrong two days ago but I don't remember actually hurting it or lifting something heavy or anything like that, but we're at the top now. Mountain girl. This is just like Chamonix, France, apart from a little hotter. <laughs> and just more, a bit hotter, yeah. And a bit more jungle here. Oh, look at this strange palm tree. So we are at the Jellyfish Lake. Oh, in fact, I am. Uh, we forgot our brain this morning, so we came here without our goggles. So going to the jellyfish lake without seeing inside the water is not really interesting. So Vernon went back and I'm here alone. That's quite crazy, in fact, to be alone here because we are traveling together and almost all the adventures we are doing together. That's one of the rare time I am by myself, really. And in such crazy nature, just silent far from everything. It's almost a bit oppressive when you can't hear anything and you are far from everything. We are not used to, I think as humans, especially now, nowadays that we have internet, we are connected everywhere. It's still good to know that some places are still remote without any connection, that you can be just facing yourself <laughs> and nothing else.
So how's your experience in the jellyfish pond? Well, it's quite a special experience because I never saw so many of them, but it's a bit scary for me because even if they are not really dangerous, like many jellyfish instinctively, I don't really want to be there. And I think like, I don't know if I already talked about that in other episodes, but I'm quite reactive at any kind of, I don't know what it is, plankton or things in the water. It makes me a bit itchy. And these jellyfish, even if they are not burning, they are itchy for me. So that was not really pleasant to, to touch them too much. I'm pretty amazed by them. On the surface, there's not too many, but you dive down five meters and it's just poor clouds of them. As you can see in the shots here, it's pretty incredible. There's two different sorts so far that I've seen. It's like the yellow fluffy ones with the tails on them and then there's just the sort of white frisbee sort of disc ones. Um, pretty cool though, Fuck, it's amazing. Just swimming down deep and just going through the clouds of them. You can feel them all against your legs. The bigger ones are quite thick, like they're quite solid. Like the small ones you don't feel, but you sort of feel like they should be burning you, but they don't, I don't know, I'm not feeling a reaction from them. But uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible here. Back in the dinghy now. We just came down here. That was a pretty cool adventure. Pretty sick. Pretty stoked on that. Good morning, everyone. We are still in our amazing anchorage in Misul. Bernard is flying the drone to showing you a little bit the beautiful landscape we have all around. And today we're gonna try to find the. Um, there's a mountain to climb, but we have to find by which way. We saw on the map roughly where it is, but yeah, we have probably to turn around the island to find where is the, the start of the track. Right, let's go! Alright, drone's in the air. Well, we found this mountain walk, which we thought was going to be a hard to find little ladder on the side of a cliff that you sneak around and then it's just like you make your way up a mountain, but, but, in, fact, but in fact, it's quite a, a massive jetty and a huge lookout on the top. I'm sure it's going to be a great view up there, but um, yeah, pretty touristy. But anyway, there's probably no one here for two years now. So there's a couple of kids here. They're not talking to us, but they're here. We'll give you a look. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yay. No. Oh, beautiful tree. Punka glove. The yeah, fallen. <laughs> Look at the size of this step for my small legs. This is not a Marie size staircase? No. It's maybe a Vernon size staircase. Yep. Well, it's quite, quite a gap, huh? As you've seen on our past videos, we've been doing a lot of sailing recently. Covered a lot of ground. Haven't done a lot of walking at all and now <coughs> nearly vertical and these steps are pretty far apart they definitely saved some wood here making every second step oh it's hot no wind here wow what a crazy place little islands everywhere reef some homestays being built. Oh, it's really amazing. I've seen the satellite maps, obviously, but they don't really do it justice compared to this crazy amount of reef and tiny little islands and cask towers and that. It's pretty crazy. 
you can cruise around here in your dinghy for months just exploring there's some little homestays here looks like something in the distance little homestay all these reefs and stuff out here amazing wow come down to pretty awesome lookout point here look at this where is the love but just walking down here like look at this i'll go back a bit and i'll come and walk down so you're walking along here pretty big cliffs all around oh look there's a, there's a white parrot down there I saw you! I can see you! I'm trying to learn to talk parrot. I've got dog down, but um, parrot's a bit tricky. We normally get them to talk to us, but I'm trying to talk to them. It's hard to know if they understand. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Here, just a lookout, no guardrails down here. Bit slippery, bit loose underfoot. Straight to the edge here and down to the Love Hout lookout. Now, obviously, this is a lookout that people these days come to take selfies off for Instagram, blah blah blah, hashtag this, hashtag that. But just thinking in Australia, for example, anything more than a meter and a half off the ground, you've got to have a harness and roped in and there's guardrails and probably a person watching there to make sure that you're not coming to any mischief. And here it's pretty much just nothing at all. But maybe people here just take care of what they're doing, not just blunder around. Also, they probably don't have any uh, suing of people because they stupidly hurt themselves. Anyway, big contrast. What do you reckon? Well, it's quite nice, this love house. I was not expecting that. No, I didn't think it was going to be here either. Oh, that's super nice. Look at the cliffs up next to it. This place is just truly incredible, though. It's like the natural beauty the shapes the the sounds the way the birds just flying around here they just there's thermals everywhere so there's these massive frigate birds just not moving a muscle and just and all these nooks and crannies i mean up here you can sort of see everything but when you're down in the boat and you're driving towards it, it just looks like a wall of rock you get a bit closer and there's an entrance there and a little gap there and you can go in and out of these little islands and it's deep and then it's turquoise sandy coral and oh, it's just incredible here amazing amazing place Mazul is definitely a bit of a hidden gem very few people visit it's pretty incredible what do you reckon oh, it's quite amazing I never saw something like that even why I get super small in comparison of here here it's just everywhere little islands of rocks super pointy a bit like jurassic park style This is a carnival plant, I don't know if you say that in English, but this little uh, tube, they have a smell in which attract the bugs and they're going inside and the plant is eating them. I never saw them in wild, like I can see in botanic place and when I was studying the plants in school, but that's the first time I'm seeing them in wild and it's quite interesting. They're growing all over these rocks here. Pretty cool, they're, I think in English they're called a pick pitcher plant, like a beer pitcher. This is the little roof that keeps the rain out of the liquid. And yeah, there's a liquid in there. I'll have a smell. I can't smell anything at all. I'm gonna try. Maybe because you're not a fly, you can't recognize it. No, that's true. Maybe, maybe it's just about, about water, maybe mosquitoes or stuff like that 
like maybe it's just collecting a bit of rainwater and it's attracting because it's all salty here and they want to drink and oh that's too rock and uh, and when they want to drink they go inside and they are eaten well as we don't obviously don't know any of you guys who do i'm sure there will be a lot of you who do write in the comments below this has probably got some sort of acid in it, but does it smell? Does it attract them through that or is it just the, the liquid and for them to, you know, mosquitoes laying eggs and stuff?